There is what? Liberty. Is liberty waning in America? So if that verse is true and you believe your Bible, what does that mean? They mean that, huh? But we all, let's continue on, but we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let's go back to the talk about the sheep and the goats. How were these sheep so victorious that they didn't even know that they did anything? Because they were so focused upon the shepherd that everything fell into place as it should be. They weren't thinking about, I got to do this, and I'm all mechanical, and I got to do that. Yes, sister. That's what freedom is. Exactly. Beautiful thought. That's what freedom is. So here they are, so focused. And this, the, the Bible says, but we all, with the open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. There's the focus. If you got this focus, brother, all I'm hearing here is victory. That's what I'm hearing are changed into the same image. What do we behold? The Bible says you become what you behold. Yeah. Right? You, you, you be, if you're going to eat good food, you're probably going to find health. If you eat garbage food, you'll probably sustain life, but you're not going to have good health. Right? I mean, it's pretty simple mechanics. You don't pour water into your gas tank of your car and expect it to go down the road real well, right? You put good gasoline in it. So, uh, let's, we're already here in 2 Corinthians. Let's stay right here. Let's turn to uh, chapter 4. Move right down to verse 6. Because time is falling away here. For God... Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Can you imagine that kind of power? <laughs> that you speak dark, you speak light into darkness and the darkness flees. Do you realize that this is why God cannot lie? Yeah. Because anything that he says, it is. It's that simple. Has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in what? The face of Jesus Christ. Where is your focus? Is your focus on somebody's mask? Or to focus on somebody not wearing a mask? What if your focus was Christ? Where would your heart be? Where would your compassion be? Where would your thoughts be? They would be on such a higher level. Because why? Self is lost. You know, we always have these statements. You hear it all the time. People say, follow your heart. Follow your heart. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, whoa, the heart is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. So we need to follow Jesus. Behold Jesus. And stop worrying about all the mechanical issues. You know? Or I need, to, I need to put some oil here. Or I need to grease this part. Or I need to walk this way. No. You don't need to do anything. But focus on Jesus Christ. And if you're focused on Him, you're just going to find yourself doing what you need to be doing. Period. Period. And you're going to be happy beyond your wildest dreams, even if you're sitting in a jail cell, like Paul was, where he wrote some of the wonderful words that we're reading. Verse 7. 
But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Is that true or what? This here, right here, talking in front of you guys here, is a crackpot. It's a broken earthen vessel. Let me tell you. It's got holes all over it. You know? I just put some new wounds on me the other day. The beautiful part is that I know my commander-in-chief who has taken on wounds for me and taken on wounds for you that he will carry through eternity. You stop and think about that for a moment. Just grasp that thought that he who is love beyond your comprehension, he who knows all things, thought about you when he decided to die the second death, when he decided to live your life to be spit upon, to be called all these horrible names, to be not recognized by his own people. He who is the life giver. Think about that. In heaven, he'll be the only one carrying scars. There's no word about us having any more scars. He's promised us brand new bodies. But he Imagine the humbleness of that man, of Jesus. I, I, I mean, can I even say that man? I mean, as the words come off my lips, it feels just like it falls flat. We're talking about God. God incarnate. Absolutely. Yeah. He's become the head of this planet. He is the second Adam. He's not only, he's not only the, the leader now of this world, but he is very God. All of creation owes life to him. He was not happy in heaven without us. Uh, Amen, brother. He was not happy without us. Moved heaven and earth to save us. We, we can't even comprehend the level that he has come down to save us. I'm thankful for the rain in Florida. You can complain about rain in Florida, but let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, it's a lot better than fire. Let the rain come. I love Florida weather. I'm all about a little bit of rain. Or it's finer than me. Because, you know, you think about it. Florida, we have such awesome weather. If it, if it doesn't rain for a couple of days, it gets pretty darn dry around here, doesn't it? Think about it. I mean, it doesn't take much. We are very blessed to live here. Though this place is dark. Dark. And we have a better place than we're going to be going to. And I don't think it's that far away. And I hope and pray that people begin to wake up. Because, you know, when the towers did fall, there was peace even in New York City that lasted, what, two weeks? I mean, guys actually stopped. A taxi cab would actually stop and let a guy out, which never happens in New York City. Our focus needs to be Jesus. Beginning in verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but yet not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the light also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So who's this all about anyway? Is it about you? No. <laughs> it's about Jesus. I saw a, a Rolls Royce one day rolling down 95, and the guy, if you could put a bumper sticker on a Rolls Royce, it had one on in the back window, and it says, it is all about me. I mean, that, 
that tells you everything you need to know about that fellow. Such is life. It takes all kinds to make a world. 2 Corinthians. Um, let's go to 5.10. This just shores up the verses that we were talking about earlier. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So should we be focused on our brother? I don't think so. If there's anything about our brother, we ought to be lifting him up, not tearing him down. It doesn't make you stand taller when you stand on somebody else. A lot of our leaders could learn that. Um, God designed that the prince of sufferers in humanity should be judged of the whole world. He who sub submitted to be arraigned before an earthly tribunal. He who came from the heavenly courts to save man from eternal death. He who men despised, rejected, and upon whom they heaped all contempt of which human beings inspired by Satan are capable. He who suffered the ignominious death of the cross. He alone was to pronounce the sentence of reward or punishment. It's that simple, brothers and sisters. It's all about Jesus. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child was born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's everything, brothers and sisters. You know, as we were talking in Sabbath school, we were talking about some things, and, and I had mentioned the Avenger of Blood. If you know your Old Testament, you know the story of the Avenger of Blood. If he caught you outside of the city, he was to take your life. But God is the avenger of, of blood. But his job, as he sees it, is to get you into the safe city so that he doesn't have to take your life. Because he doesn't desire to take your life. God desires that you should be saved. That you should be with him forever. Because all of God's people are his children. They're his children. So who is it that goes on through eternity with lost children? It's God. God. And each one of us can only give worship to God the way that we can. It's like you say yes, every snowflake is different. Every individual is different. Even though some of us might have the same kind of personalities, we're different people. Very different. And we can only give to God what we can give to God. And it's Him that suffers if we should choose to be destroyed. And if we choose to be destroyed, why are we destroyed? Are we destroyed for our sin? No. Jesus died for your sin. If you choose to be destroyed, you are destroyed for lack of belief. That's the truth. Jesus is the counselor and the everlasting father. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. So the man that's standing here to judge you, as the accuser brings you and he makes the accusations against you, the judge takes his robe off for a second and he comes down and he's also your lawyer. How can you lose? You can't lose. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is where it's at. 
66 love letters all written to you about his beautiful love that he has for you. And this love is so hot, it can't be quenched. Even sin, sin in whom he hates, complete and utter wickedness, has not squelched his love one degree. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, this God that we serve is beyond our comprehension. His humility is beyond understanding. I think that we could humble ourselves a very little bit and try and love the unlovable in the name of Christ. Amen. That we may be shown who we truly are and what we're made of. That we may move as an army of one. Think about how happy that would make our Heavenly Father. Is it that difficult? For us to give up this fight and allow him to have 100% of the real estate of our hearts, that's victory, brothers and sisters. Our closing song will be 322.
think on the, on the, the concept of, of God frowning upon us. If you have any fear in your life, that ought to be the fear. If you have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, your biggest fear ought to be that He would frown upon you. He's not seeking to destroy you. Let's seek the smile of God. Let's seek to do His work and to do His will. And let Him have His way with us. If you feel that these are the thoughts that you have and you want, I just ask you to raise your hand as I bow and have a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much that you sent your Son. You held nothing back. You gave us the very best gift that heaven could give. You gave us your Son, the Lord Jesus. And we ask you, as he has been lifted up here today, and we know that where he is lifted up, you are. Your angels are here. The Holy Spirit is among us. We ask you to bless this crowd. Bless us so that we may be thinking as one. We would be plugged into the Lord Jesus Christ. That your name would be lifted upon high. That we may do the will and the work of mighty God. And in his name we pray.